Hello, and welcome to Accelerated Computational Linguistics at Dartmouth College. My name is Rolando, and I want to thank you for your interest in this class. Here, we're going to use the tools of computer science to model human language. And we're going to be looking at two questions. The first one is, why is human language such an interesting challenge to computer science? Why do we have an entire class devoted to it? Human language has many layers of complexity that we will study during this class. The second question is, how can we use our tools to model human language so that we can have software that, for example, transcribes what we say to a, a mobile phone or finds a document when we type it into a search engine? The first question is, why human language is such a challenge for computers? There's many answers, but the first one is very obvious. There's many human languages. There's about 7,000 of them, and they're all, they all have many differences. Some of them are very obvious, like having different words or different writing systems. Arabic, for example, is written from right to left, and Chinese and Japanese are written without spaces between the words. Beyond those superficial differences, there's differences in the way languages configure their words. For example, in English, a sentence like, I love New York, is what we would normally say. However, other languages have other orders. For example, in Japanese, the correct way to say the sentence would be, I, New York, love. In other languages like Welsh, the verb would go first, and the correct sentence would be, love, I, New York. In languages like Ishkariana from Brazil, the correct order would be, New York, I, love. Even in languages that we might be familiar with, such as English, there's many challenges awaiting us. For example, there's sentences that can have two very different meanings. In the sentence, the chicken is ready to eat, maybe it's the food, or maybe there's a chicken that is waiting for the food. There's sentences with two meanings, and on the other hand, there's sentences that are perfectly correct, but have no meaning at all. For example, colorless green ideas sleep furiously. The sentence is perfect English, and yet you cannot imagine what it could mean. We are going to study many ways in which language poses a challenge, but we are also going to study how people have tackled these challenges. And we're going to focus on the two main streams of solutions that people have tried. One is rule-based approaches, and the other one is probabilistic approaches and machine learning-based approaches. In rule-based approaches, we're going to study structures like automata and finite state machines. We're going to study regular expressions. For example, this regular expression finds email addresses in text. We're going to study parsing rules and how computers can understand the structure of a human sentence. On the other hand, we're also going to study probabilistic approaches. For example, in the sentence, we finish each other's, what you would usually say would probably be something like sentences. It would be very unusual for someone to say, we finish each other's sandwiches. You have a certain intuition in your mind about which of the two would be more likely to occur. We can use these statistical properties to feed them into the computer and to have the computer um, generate new text, for example, or understand the properties of previously existing text. For example, how are you in English is usually translated as como estas in Spanish. Not always, but very often. In the class, we're going to start with text uh, processing and normalization, regular expressions on how to get the text to a shape where the computer can operate on. On week two, we're going to study rule-based approaches, uh, automata, finite state transducers, which are used in applications such as speech recognition, and we're going to study the types of rules that human languages have and why uh, some of them can be modeled through rules and some of them are better modeled using machine learning. On week three, we're going to work with uh, supervised learning. We're going to study sentiment analysis, clustering of documents, and a structure called word to vec which is trying to find what the meaning of a word is based on its neighboring words. On week four, we're going to study n-grams, which is what words follow one another. And we're going to look at spell check. 
On week five, we're going to start our machine learning exploration. We're going to study support vector machines, which can help us classify structures. For example, tell us which uh, dialect of a language we're listening at, we're listening to, what uh, language we're reading in a document, and parts of speech, whether something is a noun, a verb, or a conjunction. On week six, we're going to study different neural network architectures. How can we use them to process language? And we're going to study machine translation briefly. On week seven, we're going to study parsing, how to understand the structure of human sentences and understand that when you ask the computer to play the Beatles, one of them is the action and one of them is the thing that wants to be played. On week eight, we're going to study information extraction and how can the computer get meaning from documents so that it can understand that if you want a restaurant near me, that those have a certain mathematical meaning. On week nine, we're going to study speech recognition, both in traditional systems and in the more contemporary end-to-end -end systems, which are based on machine learning. And we're going to study how speech recognition works in languages other than English, in languages with low uh, resources. On week 10, we're going to focus on our projects, and we're going to discuss where to go from here. And you can call me Rolando. I, I am from Costa Rica. I did my PhD in Tucson, Arizona, which was fairly warm. After that, I worked in New Zealand. I worked with indigenous languages. Uh, I've worked with them in the Americas, in Mexico, Bolivia, Costa Rica, and also in Polynesia. Uh, we're going to have plenty of examples of a language called Cook Islands Māori. I work with, yes, natural language processes, processing in indigenous languages, particularly smaller languages, and I'm very happy we're going to be doing this together. Welcome to Accelerated Computational Linguistics, and I'm looking forward to working with all of you.